Hi guys, haven't been showing up for a while now, I know, but work and family took a lot out of me. Even if I couldn't answer all of them, I've read every single one of your comments and was very happy that you have stayed with me and have cared so much. And that's why I have three albums for you today. Well, actually it's just one set of pages, but with three different bindings. The pages are kept deliberately simple, but you will see what difference the binding makes. But I'm already talking too much again. Let's go! All three albums have a size of approximately 9 by 8 inches, which corresponds to 20 by 23 centimeters. Simply decorated at the front cover and kept completely plain at the back, each of them is held together by a synthetic leather strip. On the inside of the cover, we have a few tags that can take pictures as well as accompanying text. They are in small pockets where tickets, letters and all other possible things can be put as well. If and what you will put here is of course up to you, but these little bags ultimately offer a lot of space for all sorts of small things. With this binding, the inside of the spine is visible and I decorated this with design paper and small rhinestone butterflies. But now, here's the first page. All pages can be taken out due to this particular binding. The element on this page is a flap combination which is closed with a magnet. The upper flap can be opened upwards and has a second flap underneath that opens downwards. And right underneath we have a photo mat which is soon with a zigzag stitch like everything else in this book. The back of this first double page is much simpler. Here we have a single flap that also attaches magnetically to its base page. The only special thing about it is that it can be opened twice. In order to make this page visually interesting, I used small paper strips with different patterns on both sides. And as being said, this flap closes magnetically. As always, where things need to be attached somewhere, I used magnets for the photo mats on the next page. They are preventing the mats from falling off the page and give the impression as if they are hovering over it. The magnets will find each other once the mats have been removed and then put back again. And as already seen before, we have big photo mats with pull tabs in between the pages. On the next page, there is one of my favorite combinations with a photo mat behind a belly band. It's decorated with an edge punch and holds the photo mat in its position together with the heart shaped bead at the bottom of the page. The flap below has a pressed bottle cap as closure, which is held on the base page again with a magnet. And here I tried something new. A slider is closing the two flaps at the top and the bottom, but can be pushed to the right and the left to open and close them. The two double flaps are offering space for mini prints or accompanying text for all those of us who also like to take notes in their albums. As being said, the pages are kept deliberately simple. And since I only did six different layouts, the pages will repeat in the following. However, due to the different paper compositions, that will not necessarily be noticed instantly. But after another variation of the double flap page, I have here one more new layout. It has a side pocket with a punched edge and a soon photo mat inside. The pocket is decorated with rhinestones and in between the pages we find another large photo mat again. And here another variation of the page with the photo mat behind the belly band and the pressed bottle cap. Also the two floating photo mats are here again in a different paper composition. And here you can see again how well the two mats will find their position on the page again once they have been taken off and put on again. And here again the sliding lock that holds the two double flaps together. This one hasn't been moved so much yet and so it's a little bit stubborn. But this will go over time. And as usual, a simple layout follows a complicated one. And that's exactly why we have the simple photo mat in the side pocket here again. 
Well, and so we are already at the last page, which is pretty much the same as the very first one with the double flap element. It is simply mirrored to get the photo mat out of the left side of this page. The page on the inside of the back cover is also a copy of the one in the front. It is simply missing the big pocket at the side because this space is needed by the binding in this album. However, the two other albums do have this pocket, but simply on the right hand side. The tags can again be used for accompanying text to capture written memories to the pictures. As being said, this is a ring binding where I simply took an old ring binder's interior and inserted it here. It's a very simple binding, which also allows you to add additional stuff to the album that would not fit onto the pages. Another possibility for a binding is the ribbon bead binding, where a ribbon is threaded through the entire album and closed with a bow at the front. I use big eyelets here in the cover so that the ribbon cannot harm it over time. Everything else in this album is completely identical to what you have already seen, but you immediately see what a huge difference this binding makes to the overall impression. The wooden beads serve as spacers between the pages and prevents the album from becoming too bulky once filled with pictures. And here we do have space for the side pocket on the back cover, which was missing with the ring binding. The third binding option I wanted to show you today may be a little bit unusual. From the outside it comes along like a book with a round flexible spine. Well, and the inside looks like any other ordinary binding with a spiral, you might say now. But if you take a closer look, you will notice that this spiral is made out of cable ties and comes from the hardware store. A binding that I came to appreciate very much, because it can be used to make very chunky albums. Just for practice, we will start with a smaller scale, but after the tutorial, you will see that there are hardly any limits. Especially for those of you who would like to have many more pages in an album than usual, this might be an option. So you saw that it is worthwhile to think beforehand about how the album should look and what it will be used for. Should it just look nice or should it be able to grow or maybe it should be exceptionally thick. So that's it with the finished album and everyone who's not interested in how to make it, I have to say bye bye here and I hope to see you next time again. And for everyone else, here's the tutorial. By the way, you can easily jump back and forth with the directory below here in the description box. And now, have fun! The base pages are 6.5 by 13 inches and will be folded in half so that a 6 by 6 inch design paper will fit onto them. So we start right away with the first and the last page. We need a 21 and a half by 4 inch piece of cardstock. Just use an edge punch of your choice, the shape doesn't matter. First we stick a magnet on the left flap and secure it with tape. Then we put a second magnet onto the first one and a small glue dot made out of roll tape on top of it. Then turn over and secure the magnet with tape again. To make the design paper stick to the tape, I'm using some liquid glue here before the paper is put on top of it. At this point, it is time to point out that I'm sewing all the edges, which is why I'm not gluing the paper very well here. If you are not sewing, you should be a little bit more accurate. But just in case you do, the middle part is not sewn on the top, the left and the bottom, as these will be done together with the base page to form a small pocket. For the next layout, we need a 6.5 by 8 inch piece of cardstock. The long side is folded in half and covered with design paper. And here again, we put a magnet and secure it with tape. I used a few scrap pieces of paper on the inside to reduce the waste and give it some more interest.
Then everything is sewn again and the counter magnet is transferred onto the base page. And to do this I'm creating a glue dot again, adhere the flap to the page and transferring the magnet. And after securing it with tape and liquid glue, everything is covered with design paper and sewn again. When closing a double page, I'm covering the seams on the inside. Otherwise, they would be worn out over time and may open up when the photo mats are pushed and pulled in and out. I don't cover the right because the page is closed with liquid glue here. And I also leave the edge of the binding as the photo mats often don't even come that far. So, and now the page is simply closed with liquid glue and we are done with the first page. And just right on to the next layout. For this we need two square pieces of cardstock. One with five and a quarter inches and one with four and a quarter inches. The smaller one is covered on one side and a magnet is placed on the other. Cover it with paper as well and then the second magnet is placed on top of the first one and transferred again with a glue dot. The larger piece is also covered and a magnet set on the back before both squares are sewn. And after sewing, the magnet on the base page will be positioned in the usual way. As soon as the magnet is attached and covered with design paper here as well, the base page is sewn too and completes this layout. On the next page we are starting with the belly band. Its dimensions are shown here and it is decorated with an edge punch of your choice again. The belly band is folded around the next flap and so I do not have exact measurements for you here. The flap is covered on the front first. But this time the magnet is placed in the upper left corner so that the entire magnets do not get in each other's way. Unfortunately my camera had some autofocus issues this time, so sorry for that. And to protect the seams it will be taped too. Before sewing, the belly band will be attached to the flap now. Push the belly band between the cardstock and the design paper on the open side of the flap. And then the flap is sewn and the belly band is fixed right away with it. And then secure the threads with tape again. Then we take care of the next flap, which is just below the one we just made. To set the magnet, we first adhere the belly band flap and transfer the magnet as usual. Before this flap is sewn, the other side of the belly band is pushed between the two flaps. This time the second flap will be closed with a pressed bottle cap and a magnet. I'm adhering the bottle cap with hot glue here. As long as it is still warm it can be brought into shape on the back. Afterwards the flap is adhered to the base page and the magnet is set again using the glue dot method. Mm -hmm. 
Next it is covered with design paper and soon as well. Here I am masking the inside again and then I am closing the page again with liquid glue. And now we come to the more complex layout. For this we need two double flaps that are simply covered with design paper on the front and back and sewn again. I'm now temporarily adhering these on the base page to mark the position of the slit on the design paper. And therefore the design paper is put into the correct position at first. Then the flaps are closed. And now I'm using a pencil to mark the slit between the flaps. To reinforce the slit I'm using a scrap piece of cardstock with a 2 to 3 mm slit and stick it onto the back of the design paper. The paper is now also cut and folded to the outer edges and then fixed with glue. Now I'm creating two U-shaped pieces of cardstock and glue them together with their small middle parts. This creates an H-shaped piece that is put into the slit and will serve as our sliding mechanism. Now I'm adhering the flaps firmly and determine the position of the slit. Now I'm bringing the slider into its final shape as it must be able to be pushed as much to the side that the two flaps can be opened. When adhering the reinforced slit to the page, don't put the glue too near to the slit in order to keep the slider being able to move. Next, cut the top of the slider in shape. I have chosen an arrow shape to give the viewer an idea of what to do with it. I'm adhering the arrow onto the slider so that it does not interfere with the flaps. Pooh! And now we deserve a much simpler one. For this we need a 6.5 by 4 inch piece of cardstock. The outer edge is again decorated with an edge punch of choice. Next, the strip is covered with paper and then sewn again. The ends of the threads are secured with tape and then the piece is adhered to the base page and then sewn as well. Top and bottom edge will then be adhered with liquid glue to form the pocket. The inside of the cover page simply consists of only the three pockets with decorated edges. First we are creating the two small ones. After covering them with design paper they are sewn again. This time however only the upper edges. 
Then we take care of the pocket at the side and cover it at least on the upper visible part with design paper. That's how we can use all the little scrap pieces of paper we produced before. Then the two small pockets are adhered onto the large one and then sewn all around. And now to the bindings. For the simplest of them, you can either use a new ring binder and cut it into shape or you create your own one as I'm doing here. In case you decided to build it yourself, I recommend to adhere the covers and the spine with duct tape, always leaving enough space between the pieces. Twice the width of the cardboard should do. Connect the tape in the gaps very firmly. And then everything will be covered with black cardstock. I'm using matte medium for this, simply because I've made the best experience with that. I'm slightly folding front and back cover at the spine already while adhering the cardstock. After everything is dry, all corners are cut to be approximately 2 mm larger than the cardboard. Afterwards, I'm using double-sided tape to wrap the cardstock around the edges of the cardboard. Finally, the hinges at the spine are completely folded and then the front and back can be decorated. I will show you how the front cover is done and how the closure is attached later with one of the following albums so that we can now focus on the binding. As soon as the insides of the covers are ready, we can bring them onto the cardboard. The ring binder will sit on the back cover as you have seen already before. That's why the large pocket at the back is missing in this album. To cover the spine, you can simply let your imagination run wild. I'm using liquid glue here to bring the pieces permanently together. It is very important that all edges have a firm and long-lasting connection here. And now we take care of the most important thing here, the actual ring binding. These are available in many stationary or hardware stores, or you can simply reuse an old one as I'm doing here. You simply need some new rivets, which are anyway available in many places. As usual, I have listed all the supplies I used in the description box below this video. I already punched the pages before and so I'm now putting them into the ring binding because they will automatically get bigger over time. And finally it looks like this from the side. The album has enough space to grow. And so we come to the ribbon bead binding. For this we are cutting a 1 inch wide strip off the front cover. The spine is just as wide as before and again the cut-off strip on the back cover. Likewise the other album, I'm working with duct tape again and also the gaps are twice as wide as the cardboard is thick. And I'm also wrapping the entire cover in black cardstock again. The inside of the covers are now the same, but simply mirrored on the back. And they are adhered very well with liquid glue too.
As you may have seen already, I love to use these bulk clips to press the edges. Since the inside of the spine cannot be seen later, I'm simply using a piece of black cardstock here. The small pieces that we cut off the front and back covers will now be punched approximately 2 inches from top and bottom. I'm using synthetic leather to cover the spine in all three album variations. But here I'm putting eyelets in the appropriate places and then adhering everything with hot glue. I'm using the hot glue right up to the spine and then changing to liquid glue, as this simply fuses much better with the fabric coating of the synthetic leather. At the back, I'm cutting back the leather, then folding it and fixing it with hot glue as well. Afterwards, I'm transferring the holes from the inside and punching the holes for the eyelets. Now the eyelets are attached and then the entire edge is attached to the back cover with hot glue again. On the inside, the leather is also wrapped around the edges and fastened with hot glue. And of course, the same again on the other side. The actual closure is made from synthetic leather as well and pushed under the cover of the book spine. Well, I should have done that before, of course, but so you can see that even I'm far from being perfect and also have to look for tricks afterwards. So I'm using the scissors to go under the leather and trying to loosen it a bit. Then I fill the slit again with hot glue and insert the strap. The strap itself is also attached with hot glue to the entire back and so permanently attached to the album. But now, the binding. Here the pages are not only punched, but also have eyelets to enforce the holes. The ribbon I'm using is a simple decorative ribbon, but reinforced with wire. This is first threaded from the inside out, and then back again to the inside. Next we are threading wooden beads onto each of the two ends, which will serve as spacers. Then we are starting with the last page and thread it, followed by two beads again. Next the penultimate page and again two beads. And so on until we have threaded two last beads onto the first page and can now thread the two ends of the ribbon through the front cover. At the front, the ribbon will simply be tied with a nice bow. And since our little daughter always enjoys being part of a video, I can count on her helping hands here. Then I'm bringing the bow simply into shape and this binding is finished as well. And due to the beads, it can grow as well when photos are added. But now, the maybe most extraordinary binding. For this, we need a simple cardboard box, which we cut to fit the size of our covers, and which works as a flexible spine. The front and back covers have the already known measurements. The spine is now wrapped in plain cotton cloth. I'm using matte medium gel again, so that the cardboard and the fabric are bound well and consistently. The piece becomes much more durable by this, but still remains flexible. Afterwards, I'm rolling it up to give it its later round shape. If it now dries in this position, the curved shape becomes permanent. 
and here, as promised, the simple decoration of the front cover. I'm simply tearing the decorative paper onto the cover that has already been wrapped in black cardstock. The clasp that I've used on all three albums is simply drilled through the cover with two spikes. I'm using a small pair of scissors, push the clasp through and bend the spikes on the back around the metal plate. I've already covered the dry book spine with synthetic leather and am now folding the edges. These are then attached to the front and back covers using hot glue again. The inner edges of the spine are wrapped here as well, but this time very simple because it will now be covered by the binding. This time I left enough cardstock at the side of the inner covers to also cover half of the spine, and I attached an additional piece to the back of the same size. The flap at the front will now be folded in half. Here the cable ties will be attached later on. The flap on the back will later be glued onto the spine together with the whole inside cover page. You want to make the edges nice and crisp and then we can take care of the pages. First I'm marking their height on the folded edge. For punching the holes there are many methods. There are scrapbooking punches for spiral bindings or for office supplies to produce quick plastic spiral booklets for example. Or you could also use one for all those modern disc bindings. Just take what is at hand or what you like best. And then of course we need the cable ties from the hardware store. After punching the holes, we can now glue the cover pages onto the covers with liquid glue. Likewise the albums before, the pieces must be connected very well, especially on the outer edges. That's why I'm using my bull clips here again and also pressing the cardstock very well to the flexible spine. And once everything is dry, the cable ties can be inserted. They will go through the two folded and punched pieces of cardstock. Next you take the pile of pages upside down as if you would already have flipped through them and then start with the first page, which should now be the lowest. Then the penultimate, that is the second page of the album, and so on until you have reached the top page, which is the last page of the album. Now the cable ties can be closed, but please don't do that in one go. Just close them first and then make them smaller step by step. The cable tie binding is the ideal solution for very thick and chunky albums. Because cable ties are available in almost any length. And so neither ring bindings nor ribbon bindings can keep up with them. In order to get the cable ties evenly into the right size, I'm carefully making them smaller always checking from above whether a reasonable size has been reached. And if not, I can still readjust. But once a reasonable size is reached, we can cut the ends off and check one last time how the album moves. If everything is fine, the ends can be cut off just behind their closure. And so the album is done as well. Well folks, and that's it for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, then please like, comment and share this video. And if this is your first time here at Color Your Life, then I would love to have you subscribe. And if you additionally click that little bell, you will be immediately notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. And if you like more inspiration, then I have here and here some other proposals for you. Just click on the vids to play them right away. Well, then there is nothing more to say than thank you so much for watching and hope to catch you next time again. Bye bye.